One ditch was so deep you could put a team of horses in it and couldn't see them. I can recall too that he said about the crop production was so low, uh, they hardly had enough alfalfa to feed the cattle through the winter. There was a gully that went up toward the uphill. It was deep enough to bury a horse or a cow. The soil was that eroded that they would have to cut their grain and into bundles and fill it into the ditches so the horses could get across when they were uh, bindering it. Elder Leopold put in an article one time, it was like a water off a tin roof. I also remember him saying that in the dry year that they had to cut down oak trees for forage for the cattle. This was the start face of much of western Wisconsin in the late 1920s. After seven decades of hard farming, the land and water suffered. Dust swept across the Great Plains, and topsoil washed into gullies. In the Coon Creek watershed, the cropland erosion was extremely severe. The woods were overgrazed. Tremendous amount of gullies in the woods, in the crop fields, tremendous amount of sheet erosion to the point that farmers couldn't even harvest their crops off their fields. Productivity was dropping down to almost nothing. And the floodplain areas down in the valleys were filling up with silt. Everything was pretty much unraveled. But even as the soil washed down the hillsides, USDA soil surveyor Hugh Hammond Bennett campaigned relentlessly about the menace of soil erosion. Eventually, Bennett's pleas were heard. In 1933, Congress appropriated $5 million for erosion control, and President Roosevelt appointed Bennett the director of a New Deal agency called the Soil Erosion Service. Bennett selected the Coon Creek watershed in Vernon County, Wisconsin as the first erosion control demonstration project in the nation. Four conservation planners had to convince farmers to try the new conservation farming. The planners work with technicians, an agronomist, forester, engineer, economist, soil expert, and wildlife biologist to come up with ideas for conservation practices. Some worked and some didn't, but many are still in use. Thousands of young men across the nation were laboring on public works projects such as the Coon Valley Watershed. Known as the Civilian Conservation Corps, or CCC, these young men provided the heavy labor. Most of the conservation practices and systems that were developed work with individual landowners were actually developed one-on-one -on -one by the individual conservationists, uh, getting together at night, sitting down and saying, hey, what worked and what didn't work? And surprisingly, a lot of the conservation practices and systems are the same conservation practices that we use today over 60 years. Contour strips, diversions, terraces, grade control structures. Interestingly, and I've heard this story many times, a lot of farmers got in because it was such tough times, like 20 to 25 percent of the farmers were behind in their property taxes at the time, their tax delinquent. Many of the farmers got into the program because they just wanted to get the five years worth of benefits and then get out. After the five years, the farmers wouldn't get out. They wouldn't think of getting out. My grandma had the mortgage on the farm, and uh, when my dad told her what they were going to do, she said, you're not going to be able to keep your farm. The government's going to take it away. But he didn't listen to her, thank goodness. More than half a million tree seedlings were planted, and cattle were fenced off steep hillsides to reduce erosion. The Coon Creek Project was wildly successful. In the first year, over half the 800 farmers signed up, bringing 40,000 acres into the program. As a demonstration site, it drew thousands of visitors from all over the country and the world. We had only 21 loads of Lewis Hay in 1934. The year after, we had over 100 loads of hay. Next year, when the barn was full, Okay. <laughs> yeah. Within two or three years after the erosion control demonstration project started, a lot of farmers, and I've heard this story over and over, had to add onto their barns because they had so much extra corn, so much extra hay. In the very short time it was open, 
from late 1933 through 1935, a conservation ethic in science was born. The conservation practices slowed the soil erosion, improved fertility, and agriculture in the Coon Creek area was revitalized. The Coon Creek watershed is one of the most studied watersheds in the country. The improving water quality and quantity due to upland conservation practices has been documented since 1933. The Department of Natural Resources came out and said, forget about trout fishing in creeks like this. This is Timber Cooley. Forget about trout fishing here because the water quality is never going to be good enough in order to support trout. Now, years after that, 45 years after that, this is one of the best trout fishing streams in the state of Wisconsin. Time has changed many things. Hugh Hammond Bennett's Soil Erosion Service became the Soil Conservation Service in 1935. Sixty years later, it became known as the Natural Resources Conservation Service, NRCS. The number of dairy farms has declined in Wisconsin, and the Coon Valley watershed area is no exception. The loss of dairy has had a trickle-down effect on the conservation practices implemented more than 70 years ago, specifically the use of contour strips that are the signature of the Coon Valley area. Things are changing in this area. We're losing our dairy farms. We've gone from 1,200 to 700 dairy farms. With dairy farms, you need hay. When you don't have dairy farms, you don't need as many um, acres of, of hay. And so you don't need contour strips with hay. And so what's happening is we're losing a lot of our contour strips. We're removing the strips and going to all cash crops, to me, uh, like I said, I think it, it's going the wrong way. It's going to the way it was before the, the, before the watershed project. Fortunately, we do have a substitute practice available to us now today that we didn't have in the 1930s. In the 1930s, all the farms were moldboard plowed. By the 1970s around here, most of the farms started to use conservation tillage. Now today, most of the farms that have had the contour strips removed are growing corn and soybeans, but almost all that corn and soybeans is grown through a system of no-till plantings, which is comparable in soil loss to the old-time contour strips. Our soil surveys show that we've lost probably a third to two-thirds of the original topsoil. So we're farming a mix of topsoil and subsoil. If we hadn't gotten involved with a project like this, and we hadn't started establishing the conservation practices, the diversions, the waterways, the terraces, uh, I don't think there'd be any topsoil that we'd be farming. So if it wasn't for this project in the Coon Creek watershed, I think it's pretty safe to say that we probably wouldn't have agricultural production like we know it today.